Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the CNC with Dave Gatton Show. I'm your host, Dave Gatton. And I've got uh, joining me tonight, uh, Javi from Javi's Woodshop is back. Evening, all. Uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, Javi. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Javier Anzueta from Javi's Woodshop. Happy to be here, Dave, watching the chat for you. All right. Appreciate that. And also, Miter Mike is... Uh, Joining us on the panel, but he, I, I doubt if he's really going to be paying attention because he's busy working out there in the shop. Tell, tell everybody what you're working on, Mike. I am working on the Orange Beast. So she's apart right now, and hopefully she'll be together soon. Yeah, uh, I'm sure a lot of folks out there can relate to uh, what they're seeing there. Looking good so far, Mike. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we're going to do a, uh, a little show and tell show tonight. Um, I don't have as many photos uh, tonight to show y'all as I've had in past shows, uh, but the photos I've got are pretty awesome. So we're going to go through them. But real quick, Javi, are you are you busy? I nope. see you, uh, you got the better radio voice than me. How about you do uh, the shout outs over there in the chat and give a rundown of who's joining us tonight? <laughs> well, thank you, Dave. Uh, absolutely. We have Becca Miller, Bubba Hogue, Carl Whitaker, uh, Charles Lawrence, uh, David Mitchell, Del Ludlam, Ed Newman, Gerard uh, Tono, Greg Euler, Steve from Harniel Media, uh, Jay Woodshop. Uh, Jerry Coleman, Josh Latta, Keith Allen, Larry Galt, Troy Pritchard, and Steve Adkins from Woodshop Dog uh, to begin with. Okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing the, the little show and tell thing. And I did want to mention before I forget, and I didn't write any notes down like I sometimes do, so I'm going to say this now before I forget because I know I will. Um I'm not 100% certain, but I'm about, I don't know, 95% certain that next week's show, uh, I got an email from Rob Schuster, and I'm pretty sure Rob's not out there in the chat tonight because uh, I was going to do what he suggested this week, um, but he said he had some other commitments. So I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do it next week. But he gave a good suggestion about doing a show about G code. Uh, you know, everybody uses it, but not everybody knows what the heck it is. Yep. Absolutely. So we thought we would do, uh, you know, and of course, if you know Rob Schuster, he's he's the uh, Linux CNC representative. <laughs> so uh, uh, he'll be talking about the G code is and how, how it relates to Linux CNC. And then I'll do my best. And, and if I can get Javi to join me too, and Mike and all, we'll, we'll talk about absolutely the, the G code. And, and, you know, the cool thing about using software like Vectric, VCAR Pro or Aspire, or really, really any software for that matter. When you do the post processor and stuff, you load the, you know, as long as you pick the right post processor and you take it over to your machine, as long as the post processor was set up correct, you know, it'll, you know, your part will run just fine and you really don't need to know any of that stuff. But, you know, once Rob made that suggestion, I'm thinking that's a really good idea because I know enough about G code to be dangerous and that's about it. I mean, anything that it's a weird, M code or G code, I have to look it up. And of course you can look all that up right there on Mach 3. And I believe UCCNC does it the same way. I think they have something you can click on. It'll give you an explanation. So, uh, but anyway, we're going to kind of go over that. We'll talk about the things that, you know, you may need if you maybe need to write a special little short program and you don't want to go take the time to draw something out and do it. You know, a, a good example to me is uh, the the keyhole slot. You know, there's a little gadget in Vectric and all, but it's basically about four or five lines of code. And I've had a I've had a little 
program that I call keyhole slot. And I, when I want to put one in, uh, you know, it's, it's real simple to write. So we'll talk about stuff like that uh, next week. Unless, of course, I, ha I haven't confirmed it with Rob uh, about next week, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be, he'll be free. So, and if he is, that's, that's what we'll be talking about. So just wanted to say that uh, before I forgot which I get later on in the show, I probably will. Um, trying to think, uh, I don't know. It, it, I haven't seen Matt Geyer in the chat. Uh, I don't think he's out there, but I, he sent me something a while back and I wanted to, to thank him for it. I mean, I thanked him on Facebook or something, I think, but I, you know, I'd like to publicly thank you. He sent me this, uh, this is a bicentennial license plate from Indiana. Of course, you know, if you know, I'm from originally from Indiana, still considered home in a lot of ways, but uh, I'm going to use this to make a license plate resonator guitar. So, and, and I wanted one and one with a bicentennial. He, I posted a thing and said, Hey, has anybody got any license plates from Indiana or whatever? And yeah, he had one. I, and, he uh, sent it to me. So thank you, Matt, for that. Um, well, you know, the guy who lives in Indiana is looking for that license plate. He's going to call you up. now. I don't know where there. he got it. I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Plausible <laughs> deniability. 18 tag on it, as you can see. So I don't know whose it was, but, uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Matt, for sending that. Uh, I can remember I was living in Indiana when they had the CISC sesquicentennial which was 150 years this is the bicentennial which is 200 years so that's pretty cool um yeah so thanks for that matt uh let's see was there anything else like i said i didn't take any notes or make any notes and i know i'm going to forget to tell y'all something that i had planned on it uh Hobby, you got anything that i should be talking about nope can't think of anything at the moment let's see uh Drawing a blank. I'm uh, asking for questions from, from the gang there. Okay. Um, I, David Mitchell says something about I got the In God We Trust plate if you need. I'll take any kind of license plate anybody wants to send me. Um, yeah, I've got, I, I save old license plates. I got a, a pretty good pile of them out there in the garage. And that's what I'm going to start doing is making some uh, what they call license plate resonator guitar uh, cigar box style guitar, three and four string. Um, yeah, I noticed Larry's talking about asking you, Javi, if you're going to Hickory. And that is something else I wanted to mention real quick. Uh, you know, we've still got a bunch. When I say we, I'm talking about me and uh, Sean Martyr, which – Actually, I really mean him because they're all down at Fort Lauderdale. He's got a bunch of the kiosk. And I talked to him the other day, and he is uh, planning on bringing however many he can fit in his truck, I think like five or six, and he's going to drive up to the show in Hickory. So if anybody is wanting one of those kiosks, we're going to just sell them as is, um, you know, real cheap, and anybody that wants one can get one there at the show. I'm not even sure I'm going to go to the show. I may not go. I've, I've been saying I'm going to go, and I've been the last two years, but I'm not. I'm not even sure I'm going to go this year. I've got some other things going on, and I really don't have time to go. Uh, but a lot of times that doesn't stop me. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to go or not. I probably won't decide until the last minute. So anyhow, I guess uh, if nobody else has any question, David Mitchell says it's an Indiana plate. I love Indiana plates. I've had, a, I've got, like I said, I've got the one I just showed. I got another one that uh, an old uh, high school buddy of mine sent me. Um, I probably had it a year or so and I haven't done anything with it, but I'm, going to make one and it's a dealer plate uh, from indiana so yeah i love indiana plates just because i'm from there originally so um 
anybody that, you know i'm saying it now anybody's got a license plate they want to get rid of send it to me and uh i sure appreciate it yep. uh okay uh i guess mike's shut us off so he can work <laughs> <laughs> we'll go ahead no, and get my, started. my camera kicked out oh okay you're still there uh, yeah, i'm still here he's dropping huh okay good uh, keep him calm I don't see any other questions. Javi says I won't be able to make it to Hickory. No, I won't. I, I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I've got. Um, for those of you who, well, who follow me the last couple of years that I've been on YouTube, I, I have an event at the end of the year, Santa's Enchanted Forest, that I set up and service a bunch of computers for, and um, and uh, well, let's just say it's good money. So it's and very little time, but it's critical that I be there at the beginning, which is the beginning of November. And thus my schedule is shifted for visiting the, the property. So I, I am taking too many trips. So I'm going to have to, so that, that week I'll actually be in central Florida, but I won't be able to make it back up because I got to head back down to, uh, to, uh, to Santa's to start getting ready mm -hmm. uh, the week before and the week after. I go up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess uh, I don't see any questions over there in the chat other than the ones about the Hickory show. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and get started doing the, the show and tell thing. Uh, I'll be doing a, a screen share here, Javi. So I got the yeah. chat open over here, but I probably won't be paying attention to it. So just kind of keep an eye on. Uh, Absolutely. I think Mike dropped off, but maybe he'll come back and join us. So I'm going to present me, and then I'm going to go over here. And, yeah, I got a uh, few people sent in some photos. I'm going to start here with Larry Galt. Uh, he sent this picture, and this is a camping sign. And this is uh, – it didn't give me a lot of details about it, but these things are really cool, and they must be. Uh, I, you're not presenting yet, Dave. I, it's locked on you, but it's not. Uh, you're not screen sharing, I should say. Oh well. Presenting screen sharing. Oh, so many buttons. I missed a button somewhere. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did. I. I you presented, but you didn't screenshot. I, I, I'm new at this. You know, I've been doing this long. <laughs> yeah. Only been doing it for a decade. Uh, there yeah, you go. I'm still. Yeah, I should have known I didn't get the crazy psychedelic thing. Okay, so let's try this again, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Here we are. We've got uh, this uh, camping sign by Larry Galt which is very cool. And like I said, these things apparently are very, very popular. So if you've got a CNC and you're sitting around scratching your head, wondering what kind of stuff you can make to sell, this would probably be a pretty good thing because I see these yeah. all the time. Uh, In case you're wondering folks, what, what the, the I know one of the questions uh, that I get often asked is how much should I charge for uh for an engraved camper sign and uh, the going rate if you're not using any specialty wood is uh, like let's say you're just using pine or something or cedar or something like that you're looking at about fifty dollars a square foot is is that's a good average to charge but you know it's it's whatever the market calls for get what you can get and obviously if it's fancier wood or you do a lot more then take that into account now, Javi, I know you're uh, somewhat of a camper. You have an RV. So yep. tell folks who may not know, they might be looking at this going, well, what, what does he mean a camping sign? What do you do with a camping sign? Well, basically what happens uh, a lot, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the camping America or, or RVers out there, whether they're new RVers or, or, or retired lifetime RVers, because it's a very economical way to live. Uh, aside from the fact that being out in nature is just absolutely beautiful, uh, you'll go out to your spot, and whether you're there for for a weekend, a couple weeks, or six months for some permanent spots, you put out your little sign. You put out your little uh, your your sign. You put it 
the people will mount it on the signpost. They'll 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 lean it against their trailer, whatever the case may be. But uh, the RVers of America are very proud of their of their little uh, very very tiny acreage. <laughs> Their, their little tiny spot. And, yeah. uh, and, and I would think that it's a good uh, conversation starter too, because as people walk by or come by your campsite, they're like, oh, you're from Conroe, Texas. You know, we're from, you know, and then, you know, then you get to meet people and, and make absolutely. some new friends. Uh, absolutely. And, and what's more, uh, whereas in this case, um, who was it? Uh, Larry Galt. Uh, it, it's a, beautiful sign here it looks like uh is that walnut uh um the the, the uh i don't think he i don't think he told me what it well he's in the chat there maybe we can get larry to i mean it looks like by the tent it looks like walnut but uh uh whereas he engraved it on the sign and that's often done uh others sometimes actually cut the shape of the camper out texas cedar is what he's what he oh, said texas cedar. cedar that's it okay and uh, and then some people some people like to engrave on the sign, uh, and some people like to take uh, like a three quarter inch board of say cypress or cedar something that can withstand the elements, and profile the actual camper or at least a rough approximation because the tongue obviously is, is right be, yeah yeah you know but uh, they they do a rough shape and there are so. Um, some, I've seen some uh, sign places when I go to different carnivals and stuff that, that do this type of specialty work. They will actually, they, they have 20 or 30 different styles, and some people even customize the style. If you send them a picture of your camp, camper, they'll take and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll go through the trouble. Now, obviously, you're going to charge a lot more for it, but... You offer this service to people and charge a lot more, and it's worth the extra hour you spend tracing their camper for however m much more money you can get. Just an idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I know these are popular because I see people post pictures of them all the time on Facebook and Instagram and such. Uh, so if you're looking for a, an idea for a product, there you go. Uh, yeah, the amount of money that retirees spend on their motorhomes, not just campers, but full blown, you know, two hundred thousand dollar motorhomes. I mean, they are I mean, they basically sold their house, they're living off the land there and they're and they're wealthy. They got uh, they got money to burn and and, and and they tend to burn it quite a bit. Yeah. All right. Well let's uh, thank you very much, Larry, for sending uh, sending me that picture. And we're gonna move on here. To another one. I know I saw this name out in the chat earlier. I'm uh, Greg Euler. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. O Y L E R. And I've got a little description here. We'll go through these photos. Yep, Greg's still out there. Uh, okay, good. Uh, he says, uh, my wife works for the Forest Service and her ranger retired last Friday. I was commissioned to build him a Cubs cooler since he is a big baseball fan. I took the opportunity to teach my wife how to use VCAR Pro, and now she is hooked. Uh, <laughs> I, I can see why. All right. The cooler design is one that I have been building for the past two years and sell about 15 to 20 a year. My CNC is home built from Patrick Hood Daniels book, Build Your CNC. I am using a Makita router and half inch all thread for lead screws. The cutting surface is about 16 by 36, uses an Arduino Uno, NEMA 23s and Source Rabbit for its control software. Oh. I built it last winter and now I am looking forward to upgrading to a Gatton in the near future. Yep. Uh, thanks for all you do, Greg. Oh, look, G&W Custom Builds. So thanks, Greg, for sending me these photos here. This uh, Let's take a look at this one. Um, I mean, what, what can you say? That's some nice work there. Got the drain uh, thing for when the ice melts there. Got a nice bottle opener right there on the front of it. And of course, the uh, Chicago Cubs 
logo. Let's see if this thing will let me. Um, is it lined inside or is it just uh, sealed? Well, around? let's let's have a look at some other pictures. Here's a little front on shot. Ah, oh, there we go. It's really uh, nice. Looking. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a cool little cool little thing. Life is good. <laughs> nice. nice little baseball thing there. Oh, okay, now this is on the back of it, apparently. Matthew P. Smokey says, thank you for your service. Forestry yeah. service. Nice. Yeah, I, I bet that guy's going to really like that. It's going to... Ah, see Coleman, right he here. says there's a Coleman cooler inside. Perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, that is that is perfect. Okay, let me see. I think in, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so I guess he builds it exactly size, and I... I imagine you separate the hinges off the Coleman cooler and just uh, uh, fix it to your top. Let's see if I'm missing any notes here. It says uh, or just note valve to drain water out of cooler, which was yeah, you know, right there on the side there. Very cool. Nice. Very uh, very nice. Oh, that would be, I wouldn't mind having something like that sitting out next to my fire pit. Okay, moving on here. We've got, uh, let me see here, Larry, Greg, let's do uh, Richard. I'm not sure how you pronounce your last name. I'd probably butcher it, so I'm just going to call you Richard. <laughs> uh, he makes these uh, flags, United States Navy, USS Enterprise, very nice. I really like that. And let's see what I think there's only a couple of pictures. Yeah, close up of the uh, the emblem there. Very nice work, Richard. Becca's, Enterprise. Nice. Becca said you were echoing really bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think I fixed it, but uh, okay, yeah, because sure. you weren't echoing to me. I, at least I don't didn't notice it. So, okay, uh, let's see. Yep, just two pictures from Richard. And now we're going to uh, Carlo. Carlo Rivera's. I think I saw him out there in the chat, I believe. Yep, Carlo's out there. Okay. Uh, let's see what, uh, what kind of stuff he's in here. I don't know if I've even taken a good look at these. I did get a, an email with these. He says, uh, we have been MIA from watching your shows on Saturday since we're trying to spend time outside the house slash state before the baby comes. They're uh, expecting a baby soon. Congratulations. So congratulations, uh, Carlo and Rebecca, for that. Uh, let's see. Here are three projects that we would like to share with the community. Most probably have seen them on your page, but we know that that there are viewers who don't do Facebook. Yeah, there are. There are a lot of uh, folks that don't do Facebook. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess I, I'm, I better, I got, since I have this picture up, it's called Noah's Ark. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca's design and cut. She did let me sand, oil, and hang the piece in the nursery. Stock is three quarter inch hickory that we got from a lumber yard in Mobile, Alabama. Used a 45 degree V bit for the eyes and some of the other animal features. One eighth inch end mill to cut out each animal and the squares they go into. Uh, quarter inch end mill to cut out the arc. Two keyholes in the back, linseed oil to finish. Now, nice. I don't know if there's a. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, there's the arc. Ah, that's excellent. And that's how, that's that's cool. how they fit in there. Okay, that is cool. I definitely like that. I'd be scared of that duck, though. That duck and frog. Yeah, they're pretty big, aren't they? Much bigger than the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and the whale, even. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, I guess maybe they use the banana for scale. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> very nice, uh, Carla and Rebecca. Very cool. All right, All right. let's see. We've got a uh, hook. Ooh. Says the hook, hook is 
two by 12 inch untreated pine from Lowe's, double sided carb using quarter inch ball nose for the rough and finish and quarter inch end mill to cut it out of the, out of the stock. Use dowels and reference holes, which we've talked about a little bit, I think. Uh, you know, use dowels and reference holes to ensure it lines up correctly. Sanded, burned with a torch, a barbecue propane tank with a weed burning <laughs> attachment, and waxed about four hours to carve. That is cool. I'm definitely digging that one. Sweet. Yep, that's a great looking hook. All righty, let's uh, hit the next one here. Okay, here we've got a memorial plaque. Mm. This is half inch hickory, used a 90 degree V bit for the tree, a 45 degree V bit for the words, 30 degree V bit for the dates, a 45 degree V bit for the countersink and just drilled out the holes. Yeah, I would have, I would have gone a little, a little lighter on the, uh, on the, on the V bit. But let me tell you, that wood is absolutely gorgeous. And so the tree as well. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, it looks real good. Uh, routed the edges with a round over bit, sanded acrylic black paint for the words and dates, a few coats of polyurethane. Excuse me. Very good. Very good. I like that. Okay, let's see. Let me let me ask you a quick question. Now, if you were doing that yourself, you would cut the tree, the per, the the profile of the outside almost, and then shellac, you know, put a thin coat of varnish on it, and then cut out the the letters, or you go backwards. Yeah, that's 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 exactly right. You would, you would cut out. You could cut out the the, the You would cut out. Uh, uh, well, here's the thing. You could you could have it. You could do it either way as far as the tree is concerned. What I would do is just shellac the top of it. Uh, then cut the in loving memory. Hit it with black. Wipe off the the black immediately. Uh, and then. Do the tree, and and uh, that way the black doesn't get in the tree, and uh, and shellac the whole thing. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I have a funny feeling that as soon as I start to do a bunch of, you could also um, you could also you could also just in one shot carve the whole thing. I mean, well, shellac again. Uh, I I keep saying shellac. I use polyurethane or, or or lacquer actually, but lacquer the top. Um, and again, carve everything, and uh, and be very careful. Then, when you paint the black, so you don't get it in the tree, and that'll save you a little a little time because then you just wipe off the black and just spray the whole thing with with lacquer, and you don't have to you don't have to keep putting it back in the machine. Yeah, Car Carlo or Rebecca one. I'm not sure. It's a various creations. Uh, just posted over there in the chat it says or mass the stock, then carved the tree, words and dates, sand sealed, painted, and then poly. Yeah. So they were using the aura mask stuff, which is supposed to be pretty good stuff if you get the yeah, right. Yeah, I've, I've, I've used aura mask all my life with, uh, in, in the sign business, and uh, it's, it's great. Just got to make sure you have a sharp bit for one thing, because, and, but I, I, um, I tend to stay away from it when I can't, yeah. It's it's one of those double-edged swords because on the one hand it's fantastic uh, for for masking off things like this, but at the same time, it does tend to gum up your your uh, your bits a bit. Yeah. The adhesive the adhesion. Yeah. Okay, just to uh, wrap up here, uh, Carla goes on to say they're working in a three-in-one crib right now and plan to finish in the next couple of weeks well, i'm looking forward to seeing that uh, thanks for letting us share some of our projects and thanks for keeping the community talking and learning from each other uh, thank you carlo and rebecca for uh sending me these photos that uh appreciate all that all right let's see here 
where am I at? I think I've got uh, Eric Smith. Is Eric Smith out in the chat? I don't know that I've seen him. Let's see if I can do these in the correct order because I've got he's got several here. Uh, I think I yeah, see. I got the notes here in the right order. I think this is a CW five retirement shadow box. He says some of the former military folks will know what this is. This is a Chief Warrant Officer 5 retirement shadow box. Used to hold the retirement American flag, all of the medals, badges, and devices earned during his or her career. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. That's pretty big if the uh, standard flag is underneath. Yeah, I'm thinking if the, the, the flag goes right there, then, yeah, that's probably... I don't think he, oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. He does have the dimensions. It says the box is 22 by 32 inches. Yep, I was going to guess two by three. Yeah. Four inches deep using red oak. The black emblems on the front are the lower left is a quartermaster emblem. The lower right is known as a, as a master blaster airborne badge. And top center is CW5 rank worn on the hat and collar. Okay. Very nice. Nice indeed. Very, very nice. Let's see. Let me, the, uh, let me, let me ask you something, Dave. What, what was the... Uh, um, is that... Is that uh, how did he... Um, I'm sorry. My mind is going. Uh, on the bottom left, the, the uh, emblems. Is that C and C or... Uh, so it would be four inches. Well, let's... Not uh, a lot of detail, or is that lasered in? Let's see if we can... I think it's CNC. Yeah, yeah, it's CNC. It looks looks like it's carved in there. Yeah. Yeah, from far away, it looked pretty, pretty crisp. Yeah, let's see if we can take a look at... A lot of detail. That's nice. Let's get. Let me see if I can scoot up here. I, mean, I work with red oak all the time, and it's and it's difficult to get that type of. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I could see it now that it's yeah. up close. Yeah. It, it's difficult to get crisp detail with 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 red oak. Uh, yeah, red oak is not my favorite to V carve. I, I I love working with it. I love working with it, but it's it's not a dense, not an incredibly dense wood that will. You know, allow for crisp, clean lines is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, – let me go see if there was – okay, yeah, I'm trying to do this all in the right order here. Let's see. Dog, uh, family sign is what I have next here. So this is a family sign. Uh, let's okay. see. Eight-quarter cherry carved on both sides can be hung up or sat on a table or shelf. Use V-car profile tool to make the frame, then stain the entire piece, then pocket cut the background. So let's see if he's got, well, no. Hold on here. I was thinking since it was double carved on both sides, I guess it's just the same thing on both sides. That's why I didn't show a picture of the other side. I thought maybe he might have something different there. Okay. That, uh, I, I like that. I like the way he's got this, the, the well, It looks like pine. Is that, what did you say? What wood did you uh, say? Eight, cherry. Eight quarter cherry. Sweet. Cherry. Holy cow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Very nice. All right. We have next the double dog dish. Uh, now that's kind of clever. I like it. Yeah. I like that. Uh, so I've, been, I've been wanting to make one for my dog for a while. Uh, uh, well, a single dog dish, but well, like water and and uh, food. But the the problem is that that the dog's so darn messy that she uh, she'll spill all her kibble into the food. So I'm trying to. See if I can come up with a some kind of a design that'll prevent that. Yeah, yeah. I have I have two different stand. I mean, separate stands. There are two bowls, one for water and one for the food. 
and I have one for Jack and I have one for Rocky and I'm not sure that let's see if there's a dimension on here it says it's 13 by 30 by 7 I don't think Rock and Jackie uh, Rocky and Jack would eat that close together <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to keep them separated on opposite sides of the kitchen as it is. So. Keith, Keith Allen just said, looks like the dogs are sharing a meatloaf in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of a unique it's a uh, meatloaf, water bowl. Uh, oh, cooking loaf pan. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's great. But uh, yeah, I've, uh, that's, that's good. I like that. And of course, uh, three quarter inch. Sanded plywood, as you can see from the edges there. But that's, uh, that looks good. I like that. Okay, let's see. I think we're about getting near the end here. Let's see. Where's the rest of my. I'm trying to see. I thought I had some more notes here somewhere. Because here is a, or maybe I didn't. But here is uh, some, he calls these seasonal welcome signs. And, you know, obviously you got a spring, summer, fall and winter welcome sign to hang out on your front porch. Oops. I was, I was going to say, out of curiosity, uh, uh, are these staked in the ground? They're hung on, hung on, uh, on, a, on an L post or? Uh, I don't think he told me. It looks it, like they're it, leaning it, on the wall in the house. Because I was trying oh, yeah, to copy but, and paste all the notes out of the emails and put it on this paper. Uh, and I, I don't have anything for that. Uh, but, yeah, whether you put a keyhole slot to hang it on the you know, front porch near your front door or wherever. Right. This, you know, again, folks, if you're looking for a good a good seller, I bet you these would, would yeah, be absolutely. one. Yeah, um, absolutely. Those are those are very cool. I like that. July Fourth, Halloween, and you could see, you know, and it's a good seller because you could sell them as a set of four. So there you go, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could do you could you could actually do all the holidays and. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you really want to go crazy with it, but uh, I like I like that he's got the, you know, spring, summer, and fall and winter right there. Although this wouldn't play much in Georgia too much. <laughs> <laughs> which, which one we're, uh, we're so. like uh, three weeks into fall and, and somebody forgot to tell mother nature around here because it's still 90 degrees oh, yeah. <laughs> every stinking day around here in georgia so yeah yeah but uh, all right let's uh one last thing here and i don't know if i've got any um notes on this i don't think he said a whole lot about this this is, if I can click one more picture here, one of those round little fire pit things. Oh, nice. And I guess he made this trim ring. Uh, and where did I put the, uh, let's see. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Uh, you know what? I bet you I never did print out. That, that wouldn't work on my fire ring, that's for sure. I tend to be a little bit of print a this real quick guy. because I think I, I added some things and then didn't. I'd have to get out. a replacement ring every every time I made a fire. Yeah, I've had a little fire pit, one of these little well, I don't know what you call them, fire pit bowl mm -hmm. things. Oh, great! Now I'm out of paper. <laughs> oh, but y'all can't see me on this. <laughs> But anyway, the one I had, you know, if you leave it outside, they, it rains and it rusts out pretty quick. Because the first time you have a fire, it burns all that black stuff off and then it gets all rusty looking, or at least the one I did. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I want to go back and look. It looks like he's got a cover for it. And if I recall, if I can get this thing to print, he did tell me, and I don't guess he's out there in the, in the chat but i remember he said something about and i'll get it here in just a sec as soon as my printer gets done printing that he used uh that isn't wood 
I was I was just gonna ask. You could actually. Uh, I was just gonna say you could use aluminum and some uh, some nice grill paint on that. Okay, here we go. Yeah, here I I did I added because he sent me some of this stuff and then he sent some later, and I put the pictures in a folder, but I did not print out the new thing. Uh, so let me let me go through this. Uh, seasonal welcome signs, which we just talked about a minute ago. We'll go back to here for just a sec. Very popular season welcome signs, 48 by 8 inch outdoor plywood carved on both sides, easy to store and cheaper on materials hand painted. So he's got that on both sides. So I don't know whether he must put it out in the yard or something. You said, you said how much? 40, wait, 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 48 by 8? 48 by 8. So those are big. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but painted, you know, carved and painted on both sides. That's uh, now I'm wondering where he puts them because I would think they would just go like hanging up by your front door or something. Well, yeah, I, I I would suppose you could just get a couple of eyelets on top and just hang them. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could do that. Uh, okay, now getting back to sorry about that, folks. I didn't. I screwed up my notes once again. Okay, now uh, this is the one he says, you don't have to show these, but just in case you don't get enough photos, I use my Gatton with a one eighth inch end mill on cement board. Cement oh, board holds up very gotcha. well in the Texas sun. Of course, the bit was toast when I completed, but I accomplished what I wanted. The legs are made of three quarter inch steel piping. Yeah. So yeah, so that's cement board, and I can only imagine what that bit looked like. Oh yeah, yeah. hardy board. That's that's some heavy duty. Yeah, it'll dull a bit in no time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that looks good. I like that. Alrighty you then. A, uh, you can get a small uh, uh, diamond bit, uh, and if you were gonna make a few of those and. And, uh, but even so, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's, that, that'll wear it down in no time. Mm -hmm. Does anybody, before I get out of the screen sharing, does anybody want me to go back to any particular picture? If so, I'll give you a minute to put it in the chat. If not, I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing and get out of here. Hey, did you, uh, <clears throat> is there like a site that people put that kind of stuff on for other people to, you know, just take that uh, program uh, and put it into a program to cut? Was it VCarve or whatever? Mm. What, what are you asking? Like, you know, like some other sites, they have like uh, downloadable. Um, Templates. You mean like like on uh, like Inventables or whatever? Yeah, not Instructables. Not Inventables. In uh... Like Inventables has that. Inventables, yeah. Site, right? Well, Inventables like has, there, has. Well, uh, that's that Inventables. But I'm saying, like, is there somewhere else that people go that they design something up and say, you know, here? Like a like a file sharing site. That's yeah. Like Miller saying. Well. The the one I've seen the most is Inventables. That's the one that has the most uh, the most items. There are there are little ones around and stuff. And each each club or each thing like um, didn't CNC router parts or one of those CNC router club or something have something like that. Uh, well, on all the the Facebook groups, even both of mine, the Garage Works and the Gatton CNC Facebook group, have a file section where if somebody now here, here's where it gets a little tricky. If somebody designs something and they post a picture of it and somebody else says, man, that's really cool. I'd like to have that file. You know, one, that person can, can send them, email them the file personally like that, or they can go, well, I'll just put it in a file section and that way anybody can get it. But where it gets a little tricky is, you, you know, having a file section in a group like that. You, like you can't go to design and make and buy something and then post it, make it and post it. And somebody goes, Oh, I like that. Can I get to buy? No, you can't, you can't have it. You got to go buy it, you know? 
So that's that's one thing I hate is whenever people post in the file section, I have to look and make sure that what they're putting in there is not something that's copyright material. Um, yeah, and then there's a few places. Uh, one was just mentioned, but uh, blocked that that actually have some for sale. Um, I don't know why I was blocked, but. Uh, yeah, I, I just got notified here. Rick just he says I just got on the got onto the website. Can we start over? So, okay, welcome to the CNC with Dave show. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go back and and watch uh, watch from the beginning, buddy. <laughs> sorry, uh, Keith Allen says most files are copyright protected. Yeah, that's what I mean. You got you, you know. A lot of times when you post something on, you know, you make a project and you post something on there, there's always going to be somebody, doesn't matter what you post on there. Somebody's always going to go, man, can I get the file? Can I get the file? And, yeah. you know, sometimes I just, I probably going to piss some people off, but you know me, I don't care. Sometimes I, I'm thinking to myself when I see that, I'm like, man, why don't you go learn to draw something your damn self? You know? Yeah, it's, 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 it's really not, quite that's, simple. When you get a CNC you for, you're like. always going to be gimme, gimme, gimme. Learn how to learn how to draw yourself and do your own thing. Yeah, I mean, if it's something that that, that person drew and they don't care if other people make it or sell it or whatever, that's cool. But there's you know, plenty, yeah, there's, even there's, even if somebody, even if you say, "Man, I really like that," can I have the file? And that person says, "Yeah, I designed this myself. I'll send you the file." You should send them a couple of bucks or something, you know, five or ten bucks or something, just for letting you have the file because they put in some time drawing the stuff that you apparently don't want to do. So absolutely, absolutely, and there are plenty of there are plenty of. Uh, just free clip art places and all types of stuff where, I mean, a lot of these files is uh, like like in this place that I'm seeing the Winfield collection. It's it's nothing more than a than a painted clip art with with a. You could just take a piece of clip art, do an auto trace around the outside, cut the profile, and you're practically done. There's no CNCing involved. The rest is painting. Yeah, uh, yeah, which I hate. Todd, uh, Todd H. CNC over there made a good point. He says, you can sell, you can't sell the files, but you can sell the project. So when you go to like design and make or, mm -hmm. or, or any of these places where you buy a, a, you know, a file or a 3d model or whatever it is, you can sell it, but you can't, you know, you can't share that file because you, you know, if you, the simple rule is, you know, if you bought it, then you, it ain't yours. You know, because yeah. you had to buy it to start with. And for those of you that are that are considering making money on CNC, as far as these, um, like for instance, the welcome signs and, and all those and and uh, and all those types of signs that are painted and colorful and things like that. Uh, if you go to most of these craft shows and you go to most of these, uh, I mean, I've been to dozens. Not hundreds of craft shows and flea markets, and what what sells is the painted stuff because that's what people sometimes don't appreciate the the uh, the different uh, the textures that a CNC will do, let alone the the quality of of uh, stained wood or anything like that. We'll put in we'll put in hours and hours and hours of effort designing something on a CNC. That frankly, you'll never get your money's worth out of it. Whereas you, you could take a table saw, cut a rectangle, draw something up really nice, trace it, and and it's just uh, it's gonna make a lot more money. Yeah, um, I was laughing over there at the thing. Keith Allen says, "Hey, Mark Lindsay, can you send me that file with a square and a hole in the middle?" I think he sells the plans on his website. Keith, go check it out. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it's yeah, uh, I'm echoing again. Uh, Mike, is your you're on headphones today? Yep, that is strange. Every yeah, once in a while, I, 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 and when I, I was now. watching when they said you were echoing again, and I'm not hearing the echo. I'm near, neither am I. Yeah, uh, so I don't know. Uh, 
Yeah, Mark says he'll make a video on it. Yeah. Hot diggity. I can't wait to see that. Uh, okay, I guess uh, we're about to wrap it up here. I may actually do a show where we get out on time. I do want to mention something else. Uh, I mentioned that, uh, you know, you tuned in last week. Uh, we had Lainey Shaughnessy um, on the show last week. If you didn't get to see it, um, it's in the playlist on my YouTube channel, so go check it out. But I did want to mention that Lainey, and I just found this out last week, uh, he's, he does a – well, he's got a second YouTube channel. I'm going to give him a plug here. Uh, he's got a second YouTube channel called Spindle TV. So go over just, and it's Spindle TV with no space in between because there's some other stuff in there when you put it. And it took me a minute to, to find the right one. Um, but it's Spindle TV, and he does a live stream on Mondays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. or whenever he finishes. Eastern Standard Time, uh, and he does Vectric lessons. And I got ready to watch it last Monday, and I couldn't find it. And I, I didn't see it anywhere, and I messaged Laney, and he says, oh, we, he, something came up, and he had to postpone it. So it was on Tuesday this past week. Uh, but normally it's Mondays from 7 to 9, and what's cool is, you know, you're right there in the chat. You can ask questions. Uh, I watched the whole thing. Uh, he, he actually went about three hours, I think, uh, last Tuesday. But Monday nights from 7 to 9, check it out. And if and again, you, he's already got, like I said, I didn't even know about it until I had him on the show last week and got talking to him. I had no idea he was, was doing that. Um, but it's uh, some great information. I know I picked up probably a half a dozen tricks that I just never had bothered to watch tutorials and learn. And, and there he was doing them. I'm like, man, that's pretty cool that he did that. So, and I used some of that stuff the last couple of days with some projects I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, go check him out over there on Spindle TV. Subscribe, hit the little bell so you get the notifications. Yeah, there, there's there's enough for those of you who are new. There are an awful lot of um, training aside from the actual Vectric videos, which which uh, could be a little monotonous or, or hard to understand because of their accent. But uh, um, aside from the Vectric videos, Laney's videos, Mark Lindsay has some videos uh, out. I've got some in the past that I used to do uh, learn CNC with Javi. There's a lot of there's a lot of instructional videos out there, uh, and when you're working with files, also take a look at Matt Haas's uh, Awesome Wood Things channel. He has an Adobe Illustrator um, tutorials. Uh, there's there's an awful lot of information out there, just yeah. in our own community. Exactly, Matt Matt ha has an excellent uh, show both on. And I'm not an Adobe user, so I don't watch it a whole lot. Uh, sometimes I'll watch it, but I, like I said, I don't have Adobe, so it's not really relevant to what I'm doing. But he also has the, of course, this kind of conflicts with the Laney thing because it comes on at 7 on on Mondays as well. Uh, and that's all things YouTube. So if you're trying to grow your YouTube channel and you're into all that analytics and geek stuff, which I'm not, but he is, <laughs> you know, but you can learn some things on how to grow your channel, and that's that's good too. But definitely check out uh, Matt Haas and Lainey. Uh, I saw somebody, Carl, uh, Carl Whitaker, I think, said, "Have uh, hope you have him back." Yeah, I need to. I need to have uh, Lainey back on. He's uh, and not to mention, like like I said, if you didn't catch the show last week, forget about the digital woodcarver stuff he does. Lainey is a hell of a woodworker, and if you're just you know if you're you know, into woodworking as well as the fake woodworking CNC stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> uh, go check out his channel because even though a lot of his videos are, and, and for this channel, it's Laney Shaughnessy. Just look up Laney Shaughnessy. You know, even though a lot of his videos are, you know, might be two, three, four, five years old or whatever, they're still relevant because, I mean, he, he has some fantastic 
project videos on there. He's a hell of a woodworker. He's been one of my favorite YouTubers. Well, yeah, since this, I started watching YouTube, I guess. Yeah, yeah Dave, Dave and I were talking about it uh, before the show. At uh, uh, we've been, I mean, Dave and I, I, I've, I know Dave's been um, for a decade or two at least on the CNC, and so have I, uh, a decade on the, the router, but long before then, other CNC uh, machinery. And uh, in my opinion, Laney's way surpassed us in 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 less than half the time. Because he's been exclusively uh, devoting himself to, uh, to, I mean, and it's all about how much time you put in, and and that man just doesn't stop. Yeah. Um. And I just realized tonight, man, I'm really slack. I need to hire me a helper or something to do to do some of this stuff. I. I set up the live event for the show Wednesday, I think. And I, I know I kept thinking, well, I'll come back and edit and put the the links. I don't think I have any links in the show notes at all. Not even my links. So I'll come back and I'll put that in. I'll put, um, I, I may put Laney's stuff back in there again. Uh, I do have the link. If you go back, I did come back and add the Laney's YouTube link and, and the link to Spindle TV and stuff. I'm pretty sure I came back and added it to last week's show. So if you go check that out, um, yeah, you'll find it. Carl Whitaker says, when, when I first found Dave on YouTube, he was doing weekend project. Yeah, I used to do, you know, of course I'm not near the woodworker that, you know, Laney and all those kind of guys are. I'm, I'm just a weekend warrior kind of when it comes to woodworking, but I enjoy doing it and that's kind of what I used to do. And of course, since I had a CNC, I would kind of combine that with projects and y'all know the story. It's, you know, the, the folks would rag on me for using a CNC and that's, that's when I said, ah, I'll show you how to make one. And then that's when the whole CNC thing started. And then I'm thinking, wow, people really like this CNC stuff. So. Uh, you do it was asking if anybody's going to workbench con. Um, I'm going to skip it again this year. The second year it's been out. Uh, I'm, I might go next year. I'm tempted, but it's still pretty steep. I want to see how it, uh, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do. Um, uh, a networking, uh, show of sorts. I just, uh, just don't have the time, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess we're. I guess we've covered everything. I did want to mention that about Laney again. Um, what was it I talked about at the beginning of the show that I said I was going to forget? See, that's why I mentioned it at the beginning of the show. I don't know. I, I did forget. Your special <laughs> new project? Uh, my special new project? No, I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> I can't even remember what it was. Maybe I'll. Yeah, I'm trying to. You did, you did, you did tell us about it. Oh, God, what was it? Well, you did tell us about it just in case you'd forget. <laughs> yeah, Frankie CNC says how you were going to send me a Gatton for free. Yeah, I don't pretty sure that wasn't it, buddy. No. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't even remember what it was now. That's how important it was, I guess. Uh, we talked about the Hickory Show. We talked about uh, man, I'm drawing blank. This this old getting old stuff. It ain't for sissies. The cabinets that that you're, the guy's bringing down. I don't remember anything oh, else. It, was it, uh, was it, no, it wasn't the Hickory Show. Yeah, Sean. Now I'm drawing G code. G code next week. That's what it was. G code. Thank you, uh, Larry Coleman. Larry, there you Carl go. Carl Whitaker and, and Becca Miller says guitar. Oh, did I miss? I didn't want to talk about guitars. Was no, it? you didn't mention your, your guitar. Uh, I did post the, I that, did post Is the, that it sitting behind you? No. To your right? This, uh, actually, no, this is, uh, watch out, Brian. This is actually a 
Cigar Box Guitar. Yeah, I told y'all I went to the festival. Um, two weekends ago now. And my good friend Rusty Taylor, who is also kind of a neighbor, he lives just maybe five minutes or so from me. He hosts the uh, Cigar Box Festival, and he made this guitar, and they were going to raffle it off. And right towards the end of the, the festival, they had like two, two artists yet to perform. They brought their guitar out, and I hadn't bought a ticket. You know, I mean, I helped sponsor the, the event and stuff and was trying to help them out that way. And they, they came out with a big bag of tickets and said, anybody, you know, anybody want to buy a ticket? You know, uh, I think it was like five bucks for a couple of tickets or whatever. And I thought, well, I'll, you know, I'll throw some money in the pot just to help them out, you know, because they're trying to raise some money. So I threw, uh, you know, gave the girl a five and, and got a couple of tickets and went back and sat down. And then they drew, you know, reached in their hand, uh, Rusty reached in there and drew a number out and called off the number. And it was crickets, you know, nobody, apparently that person had left. And, and so uh, the next number they drew out, it was my number. And I'm like, man, it's like deja vu. Cause that's how you've all ever heard me tell the story about my truck. That's how I won my truck that year is the person that w they drew first was not there. So they waited a few minutes, make sure they didn't show up. And then they drew another name and that's how I won that. So anyway, so he drew my name and I won this, uh, this S S H S stands for secondhand smoke. That's his, his, uh, brand name for his, so you talk rusty taylor so uh, so the moral of the story is if you're ever at an event with at, at an event with dave don't leave early you may win some well yeah <laughs> doesn't always work or leave I, early and let dave have it i figured i would you know i figured i was safe buying a ticket because i figured there's no way i win because i figured i used up all my luck winning that truck that year um uh, but yeah, Dave Mack just said that's how he got his Gatton kit. When we were giving away the Gatton CNC kits, uh, whoever it was, I can't remember who it was that was first. We drew the first name, <coughs> and they weren't watching, or they or whatever it was. So we drew again, and he won. Yeah, so you always gotta gotta watch, um, gotta stick around. Uh, BPG birch plywood guitar. I know what they're talking about now. They, uh, I, I did a little teaser video. Let's see what time it is. Yeah, I'll talk another minute or two. I did a little teaser video, put it on Facebook. Um, uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm going to start making, when I was at the festival, of course, there were all kinds of vendors that, that make cigar box guitars and stuff like that. And this guy had, I think he'd bought a kit from, uh, nah, that's what's the name of that company. M MGB, I think. Yeah, I like the car. MGB guitars. And he bought this kit, and it was basically where it's a two pieces of quarter inch plywood for the top and the bottom. And then it's cut two layers of three quarter plywood uh, for the center section, you know, and it's just like a, a profile, like. So you can put it all together and you have, you know, less than two inches uh, and make yourself a nice hollow body. And it's like a cigar box guitar, you know, because it'll have like three or four strings or something like that. And a skinny, you know, the skinny neck like this, inch and a half wide. Uh, but the cool thing is it, it had a cool shape to it. And I really like, in fact, I almost bought it from the, the guy, Chuck Hanna, Hannabarger, I think is his name, that was uh, uh, the vendor that had that. Uh, but anyway, I got to thinking about it, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to play around with because I had a bunch of scrap plywood anyway, so I kind of made like a, you know, drew something up and just cut it out on old scr crappy plywood just to see if it looked good. And I thought, yeah, I think that may that may work. So I've got up, a, a, you know, of course, everybody knows I draw in 
the 3D model stuff and all that. So real quick, I just modeled up some stuff. One, I'm going to be doing some, like I said, license plate resonators uh, and some of these other type uh, only, like I said, it won't be a cigar box. It'll be a plywood thing cut more to a tra traditional type shape. So, uh, yeah, that's, I'm going to start piddling around with that just because uh, this time of year, you know, coming up, you know, people, kids go back to school, uh, you know, you get the holidays coming up. And, and so my sales usually kind of slow down a little bit. And instead of just sitting around twiddling my thumbs, I'm going to, you know, be, uh, be playing around with that kind of stuff because it's just that gum fun. I'm telling you, I love making those things. I can't play with a flip. Uh, I can probably play a six string better than I can a cigar box guitar, and that ain't saying much because I, <laughs> I, I suck pretty bad. But I love making them. It's just so cool to make them. And you know, you take something like a cigar box and a stick of wood, and you know, carve it out and put some strings on it, strum it, put a pickup in it. It's like, man, you can't believe you get that kind of a sound out of something like that. So I, I love making them. I'm playing. I'm, I'm going the opposite end. Uh, I'm, I'm going a bit larger. I, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of building a go-kart or rather a golf cart out of wood <laughs> for, for the property to drive around. And... Why not do it? Why not do it? Well, Picture there's plenty of reasons happen. why not. But I'm still probably going to end up doing it. Yeah, pictures or it didn't happen, you know. Yep. Yep. Internet rule. Yeah, it's a uh, I uh, I get together with uh, a lot of friends on a hangout every uh, every night. Uh, yeah, Mark and 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 Steve uh, Neil and all this and uh, and I came up with a new uh, I came up with a new not a slogan or maybe it's a mantra. Uh, because everybody, including especially myself, say, oh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. So just like we say video or it didn't happen, and now lately the mantra has been uh, um, uh, finish building it and then get back to me. Cause, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, looks like I gotta have, build, have to build it now. Yeah. We do. We, that'd make a good show, you know. Yeah. You uh, strolling around. Yeah, Jeff Connor called it a Flintstone mobile. The uh, the, <laughs> the wood part. Uh, I mean, the the golf cart part is easy. The uh, the drive and everything is going to be a, a pain in the butt part because that's the expensive part with the drive motors and batteries or whichever way I'm going to power it. And then and it's one of those things that that. When once you start on it, you uh, once you start uh, laying out all the parts, you're going. You know what? It's cheaper to buy a used one than it is to build one. And if that's the case, I'm not doing it. But you know, yeah, it'll be fun to do. Yeah. All right. Hey, I just noticed I got thirty thumbs up. I appreciate that, folks. Um, uh, I appreciate you doing the uh, the thumbs up thing. Uh, that's always always welcome. Yep. Um, also, if you know, I, I know I see a lot of the names over there. I recognize most of them. But if you are here for the first time, feel free to uh, subscribe and hit the notification button. We do these pretty much every Saturday night. Talk about all kinds of stuff, CNC related. Um, and again, like I said, uh, unless something comes up with Rob, we're going to do the talk about G code next week. Um, we won't go, you know, you don't have to bring a pad and pencil or anything. It's not going to be anything that detailed, but uh, we'll go over some of the basic stuff. And, and so, you know, some of the things, you know, like I said, you don't really have to know a single thing about G code around CNC these days with the way the software is. But it is nice to to know, especially, if, you know, if you want to use an MDI command or something like that. Um, I don't know if you all have, uh, I think I put something on Facebook the other day. I've just, I've made a decision. You know, I've got three, currently have three CNCs that I run. 
Uh, I have the, the, the big Gatton out there that I run. And of course I have the, the water cooled spindle on it and I mostly use it to, um, cut Gatton CNC kits. And I also use it for other little things. Like I've been using it for my, um, when I was cutting those guitar things, the bodies I was making. Uh, and also recently, if you hadn't noticed, I put, uh, a new top on it. I put the orange aluminum T-track in the uh, three-quarter MDF. So far, I'm really liking that. Uh, and so far, I haven't screwed it up too bad. I haven't put any marks on it. So, uh, But anyway, so I got the Gatton. I have a, a 36 by 24 Garage Works also out in the garage that I use it pretty much to cut all the HDP stuff. I make wedge templates for wood turners that want to use these templates for their, to set up their uh, Jerry Bennett wedgie sled. Uh, so I cut that. I use it for any other HDPE that I cut, whether it be uh, spacer blocks or uh, all the other little HDPE uh, pieces that come with the garage works. And that way, you know, I just use it for cutting that kind of stuff. So then I decided I wanted to get my laser going again. And, uh, you know, we've had a show talk about lasers before. So I decided I, I very rarely use that four by four Gatton or garage works, excuse me, uh, that I have out in my shop. So I started to, I, I'll answer that in just a second, Keith, stay tuned. Um, um, so I decided I was just going to make my big garage works out of my shop, my laser machine. So I put the laser on it, had to go back through because I didn't have, I didn't have any of the stuff on that particular computer. So I had to kind of go back through and set it up again. And uh, yeah, got it dialed in. It's working good. And that, and one of the reasons why I wanted to get that laser going is if I start making some of these, I don't really want to call them cigar box guitars, but the guitars with the smaller bodies and with a three and four string, you know, having that laser will allow me to do some custom laser work on the, on the bodies of those. And maybe even, you know, some folks, if you make a fretless, you can use it to burn in the fret marks and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm excited to have that going. And that's what I'm, Going to use that for. All right, let me ask answer Keith Allen's question real quick. He says, "Dave, whatever happened to the Go CNC? I still have it. It's in the other room where I was doing the shows from a few weeks ago. And I hate to badmouth any company, I really, really do, because I think it's a neat little machine. It's yeah, you've seen it. It's real little." But I got, I mean, it's really solid. It runs smooth. I think the thing would be awesome. But they have not sent me any kind of a spindle or router or whatever, you know, and it's all their stuff. You know, they, they sent that to me. They contacted me and said, hey, we'd like to send you one of these, you know, and you do YouTube videos about it and everything. And I'm like, sure. I'm glad to help you out. And I did the an unboxing video, which, you know, wasn't a whole lot, just pulling the parts out of the box. And then I did, or no, I guess that's the only one I've done because I got it running. I've got another video up on YouTube showing it moving because I obviously don't have a spindle or anything yet. Uh, but it's private. I made it and sent it to them just so they could look and say, hey, this guy's got this thing ready. It's ready to go. We need to send him a spindle. And I don't know what the deal is. I got an email from, from them probably a month ago, and they said, yeah, we're going to send you this. We're going to send you. They keep saying they're going to send me this stuff. And I haven't got it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm not doing another thing, you know, until you send me one of these things. I mean, and it's not like I can just, I mean, I could go spend my money, I guess, and, and try to get one, but they're from Germany. So, you know, it's all supposed to be their stuff. 
that was that was the deal. They said, we, you know, we'll send you everything you need. And, you know, when you do this, you know, we'll send you other attachments or whatever. And I haven't even got the spindles. And, it's, you know, they, the last thing they told me they were going to send it, I think they told me in August I would get it in September. Well, as you know, September's come and gone. And I haven't got anything. So I don't know what to think. If, they, if I get a spindle, I'll put it on there. I'll do videos and I'll get back doing what I said I was going to do. But they have to do what they said they were going to do. Like I said, I hate to bad mouth anything, and I don't mean to. It's a good little machine, but come on, if you want me to, if you want me to show it off for you, send me the stuff because I got it flying. I got it. I got it running, and it'll it'll do it. But I can't show it cutting anything because you haven't sent me a spindle. So it's on the back burner, Keith. Just put a marker on it and let it draw, and then there you go. You're yeah, you're an artist. Well, that, that wouldn't be. And then paint it, and then you could sell it, just like Javi said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ray was asking about the uh, amperage of a uh, of uh, of the twenty two hundred uh, of the two point two kilowatt uh, spindle I have, and uh, like I said, I'm not exactly sure, but I know it, I've got a ten amp circuit breaker on mine. It's never even came come close to tripping on a full load. I would imagine it pulls maybe seven or so, uh, is my guess. And Don was asking if um, if you can go for a three kilowatt uh, on uh, of two twenty two twenty on fifteen amp. I'm sure you could, but I mean, uh, I gotta tell you, I've I think Dave, I, 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 I have never bogged down my my two point two kilowatt, and uh, and I'm running half inch bits. There are. I, I run uh, well, I, I run a quarter inch bit on a half inch shank, a full three quarter inch depth, and I'm and I've been able to slice through boards, uh, one pass uh, plywood boards, and I've said this before at 400 inches per minute, 300, pushing 300, and uh, doesn't I mean make a hell of a noise, but and it'll be a lot of tear out. Uh, and it's impractical, but there's no. Uh, I'm trying to wonder if there's an actual point to having a more powerful router. I mean, uh, more power. Uh, okay. Um, I keep seeing questions over there. All right. I, Don Zanotti, can you put a spindle on a GarageWorks 48 by 48? I've answered this question. Here we go again. A couple of hundred times, I'll answer it once more. The garage where all the garage works machines were designed to kind of compete with like the X carve and stuff like that. The X carve, you know, uses the belts and all. I wanted something to be sturdier with lead screws, and it was desi designed around the compact router like the X carve uses the Dewalt. Um, 611 is that what it is i can't even remember yeah. 611 or a porter cable 450 which is just like a dewalt 611 only different color um and that's what they're designed to use have people put bigger stuff on garage work yeah they have but i always tell them hey that's on you you know it's designed to, to use this if you want to put this on go ahead i can't stop you but you know, that's not what it's designed for. So put it on there at your own risk is, is all I can tell you. Because that that machine and what the components, if I'd known people were going to be trying to put big spindles on there with that much weight, I would have designed it out of a lot thicker material. But, you know, I'd have to charge more for it. Shipping would cost more because of the weight. That, that isn't what I was trying to do. I was trying to design a small, lightweight bench top machine that would compete with the X car. And, you know, I don't know what it is. It's, I guess it's, uh, this, this, the, just the way Americans are. And I'm going to bash Americans here a little bit. Yeah, we want you know, it's like bigger is better, you know, you gotta have a big, big old house and big old, you know, cars and big old boat and get a CNC. That's gotta be a big old CNC. And, big and old I see fire people, trucks. 
Yeah, I, I see people all the time that, that get a kit. And I mean, I bet you I could count out of all the hundreds of Gatton CNCs that are out there. I bet you I could probably count on both hands and both feet how many that actually built it smaller than the plans. Everybody goes bigger. Well, the lead screws come six foot. Let's just make it six foot. And then they end up using, you know, a two by two section of it for their projects. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Don said he was looking at a spindle because you can leave it running for days on end. Can't do that with a router. That is that true. Is true. That, that is true, but I can tell you what, I've run some long programs with a router, <laughs> very long programs, but yeah, PC, portable cable 690 works great. Yeah, you can run those on it. They're, they're a full-size router. Like I said, it wasn't really designed for that, but that, that doesn't weigh a whole lot more than the, the compact routers. But I guarantee you, they're, they're between a DeWalt 611 and that 2.2 kilowatt spindle I have, you're talking a big weight difference. So enough about that. We, we, I, I, we beat that question to death. Like That's almost like the steel versus aluminum angle <laughs> question that I, that I hate so much, too. Yep. Uh, I appreciate you all uh, tuning in tonight. Um, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We've done, we managed to talk a while and get it running over like we always do. Um, I appreciate y'all so much for tuning in and watching. Like I said, go check out Laney's uh, Spindle TV thing to learn Vectric. Uh, you know, there's, you know, Javi was talking about it a while ago, but, you know, there's really three or four really great things to try to learn Vectric software. One, Go watch the Vectric tutorials or so. Uh, I, I always enjoy watching those, uh, but I'm usually trying to learn something more advanced than, you know, something I haven't already figured out myself. The other one is, you know, on the opposite end of the, the spectrum is Mark Lindsay. Go watch his videos. He does them for the, as he calls it, absolute beginner, and he does a great job. He's getting a playlist together. I don't know how many videos he's already done. A bunch of them, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can watch him. Uh, then you got the live stream, like Laney. You've got uh, Javi's uh, done CNC with Javi or whatever he was calling it. Yep. yep. Uh, done some stuff. Um, and I've done certain things on different live streams. You know, I don't try to do a whole lot because uh, um, my, my thing is when I use Vectric and I, I will say, I will have to say, I'm kind of proud of myself because when I got ready to draw those guitar things, uh, I, I thought, you know what? I am going to try to just draw it using just VCAR Pro, not use any kind of CAD software. And sure enough, I was able to, to do it. Of course, it's not, you know, it's not anything that was real super complicated. But any other time, I would have fired up the other computer and, and, you know, had it drawn in five minutes and, and then moved it over to this because I have two different computers. Uh, but, yeah, I just drew it all. And I'm going to try to make myself draw, you know, unless it's something that's got to be 3D because I don't have Aspire. I, I've just got the VCAR Pro. Uh, but I'm going to try to make myself stick to that for drawing this stuff because that's the only way you get really good at it. And that's why Laney's today and good at it is he's – you know, he's doing the show circuit, um, you know, does the classes and stuff. And he's been, you know, he's, that's all he does. So pretty much now. So anyhow, we are going to get out of here. Uh, if you like this show, please leave a thumbs up. I see we got a few more thumbs up there. Hit, hit the thumbs up on the way out. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the a uh, little bell thing and you'll get notified every time we do one of these things. We usually, you know, like I said, I'm pretty much every Saturday night, 8 PM to whenever I get tired of talking. And uh, next week, hopefully we'll get Rob Schuster on here. Javi, you'll be back, right? 
Yep. Mike, you'll be back. you probably be running your machine next week, right? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, we'll see it flying around on the, in the All background. Right. All right. Unless yeah. I get my uh, shoulder surgery. There you this go. Week. We'll see. There you go. All right. Uh, well, we're going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we will see you next week. Good night, everybody. Good night, all. Good night, all. Have a wonderful week.